Hey everyone, welcome to another wonderful episode of Wives Wind Down. Clink, 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 clink. And shout out to one of my very good, dearest, bestest friends, Erica. Thank you so much. She gave me this custom made Wives Wind Down uh, wine glass um, for my birthday. I got like two of them actually, so this is the other one. So yes, thank you so much. Shout out to her. Welcome everyone. Hey, look here, Renee. Hey, KK. Hey, Michi, Amia. Hey, Tasha. Hey, Princess. Good to see you, ladies. It is that time. Hey, sis. Hey, Renita. I see you, girl. This is that time. This is Wednesday. This is time for us to wind down with each other and just enjoy the night and just keep it real about life and love. So whether you are a newcomer to Wives Wind Down, welcome. If this is your... 800th time even though it hasn't been 800 times welcome back to all my day ones i'm so excited i appreciate you all support so much um we have a really special night on um, tonight and a really special guest and i'm so excited hey girl hey i see you in the comments oh okay. um so for those of you all who don't know i am shonda white i've been married for 12 years now i had to think about it for a second and um hey jennifer hey lexi and I decided to create this outlet because I remember when I first got married, I really didn't know like how to be a wife. I didn't really know. I didn't know what like what that all entailed and like what that meant um, because I really didn't see that for myself in my own home. And so there were some things that I was confused about. And sometimes I would feel like, you know, my marriage is over because we would have like these arguments about petty stuff or just like some drag out arguments where we wouldn't speak for days. And I would be like, oh, my God, my marriage is over. And then I realized once I started talking to more wives and more women, I realized, oh, this is normal. Like, this is just a normal part of marriage. Like, you have to go through, you have your ups and downs and stuff. And so I wanted to create this outlet so that us as women could come together and really keep it real about what it takes not only to, like, get married, but what does it take to stay married? What does it mean when you are married, whether it's been a year, whether you're aspiring to get married, whether you've never been married and you're thinking about it, or you've been married for 10 plus years? I just wanted to create a, a comfortable and a, a no judgment zone and an outlet where we could just have those types of conversations and learn from each other because at the end of the day, you have to do what's best for your home. And so that's why I created this outlet. You all have been phenomenal with your support for every share, for every update. Some of you all put on the countdown because you're like, I'm not missing this. And y'all have y'all's husbands put your kids to bed. So I'm so appreciative to all of you all um, because I do not take this lightly. I just want this to be an outlet where we can keep it real with each other have fun but also be informed about things that relate to us as women um and as you can see my wonderful shirt love doesn't hurt we'll get into that a little later but without further ado again welcome i see y'all ladies t nicole ebony and jackie and melissa and miss brown oh miss brown my maiden name is brown and that's my middle name mm -hmm. shana brown white so i'm going to welcome our guest so excited Make sure y'all grab y'all grab, grab your glasses. I can't talk tonight. Grab your glasses because y'all know we're gonna toast later on. Up oh, there she is. Hi, Hi pretty lady. How are you? Hey, I'm everyone. Good. How are you doing? I am good. I'm like, oh, she has me on. I'm like running back. <laughs> it's okay. Listen, I keep the people occupied. Okay, it's okay. all good. It's all good. You look gorgeous. Thank you. So do yes. you. Thank you. So before we get into it, let me introduce the people to you and welcome to Wives Wind Down. Um, and for those of you all ladies who are tuning in, make sure if you have questions, um, feel free to drop them in the comments and drop a one if you're single and a two if you're married. But before we get into it, let me introduce you all to this wonderful special guest. Tamiko Lowry Pugh, often referred to as the empowering diva, is a voice for women's empowerment. She is the CEO of Living the Empowered Life, LLC, which encompasses Living the Empowered Life podcast, Living the Empowered Life coaching and consulting, a personal development and, and lifestyle enhancement firm for women, and Living the Empowered Life Academy, a virtual learning platform that helps women use their expertise and experience to build a purposeful and profitable business as a speaker. Um, oh, sorry. Speaker, author, advocate, or life coach. My apologies. She is also the founder of the Still Standing Alliance, a nonprofit organization that focuses on domestic violence awareness, advocacy, and prevention. As a survivor of domestic violence, Tamiko is very transparent about her journey to healing. This has allowed her to construct a powerful movement dedicated to the empowerment 
and personal development of women across the world. So everyone, without further ado, clap it up in the chat and give it up for Tamika. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Yes. Hey, so Shonda. How are you doing, girl? How are you feeling today? I'm good. I've actually been traveling. I was actually in South Carolina working on the Jamie Harrison campaign. That's the big Senate race where they're trying to flip um, they're trying to flip the seat from Republican to Democrat in South Carolina. Uh, um, so that's one of my advocacy initiatives. So I was just got back today, but I'm rested. I took a nap. I'm here. Oh, I have my wine. Yes. You got your wine, girl. <laughs> well, thank you, because that says a lot, because you could have easily said no. You could have been like, girl, I'm tired. I'm not going to make it. But I appreciate you for taking time out from your really busy schedule because I know that advocacy is really important to you and you've done so much great work and you continue to do that. So tonight is just a perfect example of that, of you like sacrificing your time to be with us tonight. So Thank I you. really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. um, so you and Kenny have been married. And sorry, y'all, I say Kenny because we know Kenny. Because right. we have, yes, we all used to go to the same church and stuff. So we all know each other. But you and Kenny have been married for five, going on six years, right? It'll be six years in December. Yes. yes. And how did you two meet? Very great, great question. So Kenny and I actually used to work in corporate America together. Mm -hmm. uh, we worked for um, a, telecom, a telecom company. I think he was the director of operations. Um, I was a project manager, but he oversaw our department. So that's how we actually met. But the funny thing is, he would always like walk past my desk, be like, good morning, T, you know, and give me a pound. And I was like, oh, he's so cute. He's cool. You know, and I knew about his ministry and everything he was doing. He was getting ready to release his first book. Um, and I remember always saying, he's going to be a great husband for somebody. Like, he's a really great guy. He's going to be a great husband one day. Never thought it would be for me, right? Like, I was just like, he's going to be a great husband. But that's how we met. Um, was that? Actually, did you think that because y'all work together, like it probably ain't gonna be me, but he'll make somebody else a good. A good I husband. thought we were totally opposite, mm -hmm. right? I was like, he's an associate pastor. I like to go out and have fun. I like my wine, right? right? So I just, <laughs> I didn't. You, it's like we don't know what people are looking for in a spouse, mm -hmm. right? But he was looking for someone that was transparent and someone that was fun and. You know, um, somebody that he could be himself around. So mm -hmm. it, it worked out. <laughs> That's good. So, ladies, we can't prejudge the church guys, okay? You can't. They want to have fun. Yeah. And listen, <laughs> some of them are probably like they want to have a lot more fun. But yes, you can't. We can't prejudge you. Like you said, you almost missed out on your husband because you thought, oh, yeah. I'm probably not his type. And you were exactly what he was looking for. Oh my gosh, I love yeah. that. Um. I want to, obviously, I want to talk about you and Kenny, like, um, and, like, where you are now. But, I, I of course, I'd be remiss if we didn't, like, go back just a little bit. Um, because for those of you all who don't know who are tuning in, um, October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. And uh, for those who may not know, and I got this from your page, of course, um, one in four women and one in nine men have experienced severe physical injury, contact sexual violence, and or stalking by an intimate partner. Um, and for those who may not know, Tamiko, Tamiko, as I mentioned earlier, she is a survivor of domestic violence. So hats off to you for your um, courage and for your strength, because I can only imagine what that was like. Um, and I know you are very open about your healing process mm -hmm. and your experience. So I want you to maybe, and you feel free to share how little or how much you want, because mm -hmm. this is your journey. But um, <clears throat> take us back to that moment in your life when you were like in the thick of it and like, what was that like for you going through that situation? Wow. Whew. So as many times, I mean, let me just give a disclaimer. So when I'm sharing, I typically don't, I don't know what emotion is going to come up. Sometimes I, you know, I might smile, I might cry. So I don't know what emotion will show up, but I will share with you. We welcome um, all of it. So I would, I, the first thing I want people to know is that um, domestic violence is not always physical, right? It can be emotional, it can be verbal, there's spiritual abuse, there's financial abuse. Um, I experienced each one of those. It started off with emotional abuse, with him kind of tearing down my self-esteem, telling me, you know, you ain't nothing, you ain't ish, um, making me feel like uh, just very low. So the emotional abuse, the verbal abuse, um, 
what happens is you become, I became personally, I became so broken before he ever even laid a hand on me. Before it was ever physical, I was already broken. So by the time it becomes physical, I thought that I deserved it. I always thought that I was doing something wrong. Like maybe if I just cook his favorite meal or maybe if I, you know, clean up or maybe if I wear his favorite outfit, um, it'll get better, but it doesn't get better. It progressively gets worse. And so by the time he started to push me and shove me, I kind of felt like I deserved it because I wasn't doing something right. Now, mind you, my self-esteem is at an all time low. And um, what I like to tell people is you can heal like a broken arm. You can heal certain physical wounds will heal over time. But how do you heal a broken soul? How do you heal a broken spirit? Right? There's no, there's not a Band-Aid or a medication to help you heal a broken spirit. So I was spiritually and emotionally broken. Um, the day that I tried, and I'm going to fast forward. I'm not going to get into too many details, but... After several years of going through that, I decided to leave. Um, the day that I decided to leave him was the day that he tried to take my life. We were in the car driving up Interstate 85. And I remember saying, I'm leaving you today. I can't do this anymore. Mm -hmm. And he said, and excuse my language, but he said, bitch, if you, if you leave me, I will kill both of us. I was driving. He proceeded to take the steering wheel to force us into an accident. We ended up on the side of the road where he beat me and strangled me until I was unconscious. When I woke up from, con when I became conscious, when I woke up, I was in the middle of Interstate 85, literally with cars swerving around me, blowing their horns, trying, per trying to prevent from hitting me. I mean, you know how Atlanta traffic is. So yeah. it was by the grace of God that I literally stood up without a scratch from that. I mean, I had bruises from the fight from him hitting me, but from that, I literally stood up and there was a couple who pulled over. They saw what happened. They're like, ma'am, we called the police. And the police came, arrested him. But that was the day that my survivorship journey began. Mm. And that's not easy. It's not easy because your self-esteem is still low. I'm going to share something real quick. Even though I was out of that relationship, the next three people I dated had the same personality because I hadn't yet allowed myself to heal. Mm. So six months later, I started dating someone like that, you know, what do you call it? Like the bounce back relationship or whatever uh -huh. you call it. The rebound. Um, yeah. <laughs> and same guy, different face, same mm -hmm. personality. So I had to figure out what was it about me that was attracting this or allowing this to happen. And that's when my healing process happened. Mm -hmm. When I took some time away and I began to focus on myself because most women or men who go through abuse, oftentimes we're people pleasers. We want to make people happy. And that's all I ever wanted to do was make my, my husband happy. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I saw that in every relationship, just wanting to make that person happy to the point where I lost myself. Mm -hmm. Like if a person was like, Tamika, what's your favorite food? What's your favorite color? It was his food. It was his color. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I dressed the way he wanted me to dress. Dark pantsuits and hair pulled back in a bun. That's not who I am. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? Yes, so, your hair looks gorgeous. Um, really learning to, to focus on me, rediscovering who Tamiko was. What, what's my favorite food? What's my favorite flower? What's my favorite color? Right? What do I like to do? What's my favorite place to travel? So I started really focusing on myself. I traveled the world. One, one week I would be in Puerto Rico. The next month I was in Aruba. Like I really started loving on myself and doing things that felt good to me. Launched the nonprofit, started working in my purpose. Um, and I think once you start doing purposeful work, you understand who you are, you understand your values. Because when we don't understand our values, then we're not going to be fulfilled in life. We're going to attract people who are not in alignment with who God has called us to be. So once I began to understand what my values were, uh, what my purpose was, then I started to attract a person in my life that shared common values with me. Mm-hmm. Right. So that's one of the things even we tell our spouse, what are the things that you value? Because if you don't know, then you're going to just be, you know, attracting just anything. But you have to know. And I think once you understand your core values um, and they're in alignment with your spouse, then I think you're at a good place. Mm -hmm. And that's what I had to do. Yeah. And I use that on everything. I'm sorry, real quick. No, like, yeah. that's for everything the, my clients, the work that I do my spouse, the people I surround myself with, if it's not in alignment with my core values, I can't do it. Mm -hmm. Facts.
Somebody said you just said a whole word, and that is true. <laughs> and it is that true. Whole word was experience. I'm telling you. And that's so true because it, like you said, it applies to any area of your life because sometimes we can just get caught up in doing things because we think that's what we're supposed to do or because everybody else is doing it. And it's like, no, what has God called you to do? Like, and like yeah. you said, if it's not in alignment with it and I'm not feeling it, like it, it can't, it can't, it can't, it's not going to fit in my life because it doesn't fit with what God has for me. So that's right. I love that you said that and your survivorship, I love how you coined that as survivorship, your journey started. Mm -hmm. And I always wonder, I don't even know if you know this, but like, do you know what it was that day in that car, you know, when he was about to take your life? Do you know what, what, what it was that day, like, that led you to that moment to say, this is the day that I fight for my life? Do you know what triggered that? Or, or you know, was it an emo emotion or something? Obviously, besides him threatening you, but yeah. that day. I was tired. Mm. I was tired. I had two children. They were young at that time. I was like, they don't deserve this. I thought I was staying because I wanted them you know, to be in a nice home and live in a nice area and all these things, but they weren't happy. They were like, you're not happy, mommy. We want you to be happy. But I was mm -hmm. just tired. Um, statistically, a victim will go back to their abuser seven times before they leave for good. They'll mm -hmm. leave seven times and go back seven times before they leave for good. Um, I left once before that. We went to counseling. I went back. And then um, I left for good. So I left twice. But statistically, wow. it's seven times. Seven times. Yes. Wow. But I was just, I was tired. And let me tell you, girl, I was in my, I was 33. So I call that my Jesus Christ year because Jesus was 33 yeah. when he was crucified. Mm -hmm. right? So I was 33 years old. I probably looked 53 back then. Mm -hmm. Right now I'm 45. And I feel like people are like, oh, you're 45. I'm like, I looked older then than I do now because of the stress, the wear and tear, like mm -hmm. my health started failing. Mm -hmm. like, a person can literally make you sick, physically sick, yes. high blood pressure, migraines. My liver started to fail because I was popping pills, goody powders for these migraines. My liver was failing. I had all these ailments. But once I let that go, blood pressure went down, mm -hmm. right? liver started to heal itself the migraines went away mm. a person can literally make you sick and that's not what god has for us mm -mm. and listen not. you don't look your age today must <laughs> not may i say that honey? thank you like, <laughs> oh my goodness somebody said alignment hey talk to uh twyla she said alignment is the word love it yes, yes. hey like, twyla hey everyone hey michi uh, it's one three <laughs> and like you said a person can literally make you sick like that's a whole word because that's so true and like i can only imagine how much stress and how it directly impacted your health and especially us as black women because we carry all of that everything everybody's everything. burden everybody's burden including our own and so for you to say that i'm like oh my gosh that's so like enlightening um you have on your page uh, this quote that i love no matter what obstacles come across your path you will survive were there times when you thought, though, during that situation, like, I don't know if I'm going to survive? There were times. Like, my ex-husband, my abuser, I don't even like to use the word husband. He <laughs> was crazy. Like, we had this huge seven-bedroom home with all these, like, little hidden doors. And I would always think, if he kills me, he's going to put me in one of those little compartments and nobody's ever going to find me. Wow. Like, that's how I felt. And people didn't understand. I was like, oh, yeah, I got that big seven-bedroom home. It's three stories. You got it made. You get a new car every year for your birthday. I'm like, that's material stuff. Like, I can do without that. And so I'm so not materialistic. Even, like, my husband now, he's like, you don't really ask for anything. I was like, that doesn't, it doesn't matter to me. Mm -mm. All I need is, is for you to be who you are. Yes. Be a great husband. You know, love me. Um. I don't need those things because I had it and it, it just wasn't worth it. Mm -hmm. Like literally mm -hmm. when I left that relationship, I left a seven bedroom home to move into a one bedroom apartment and sleep on the floor with my kids. And we had, when I tell you that was the most peace that first night Ooh. in that little apartment was the most peace that I had had in over five years. Wow. Oh my goodness. I can only imagine. 
and thankfully you had somewhere to go because I know there's obviously shelters and stuff, but it sounds like, because I, you know, in my research and just what I've not, what I've learned about domestic violence, I know sometimes that's not the case for some women. It's, so it's not. It's not. Mm -hmm. um, Ninety-nine percent of women who are in these relationships are experiencing financial abuse. So when you ask the question, why doesn't she leave? Well, first of all, let's not re-victimize the victim. Let's not yeah. victim blame. How about the question should be, why does he hit? Why is he abusive, right? So when you say, well, why didn't she leave? You're really victim blaming. Mm -hmm. Let's find out why he hits. Why is he abusive? What happened in his past? Like, what's going on in his psyche? Um, but why they do, why do we stay? Well, why do victims stay? Finances. 99% is financial. Um, the rest of it is just they don't really have anywhere to go. They think they still love that person because at one point you were in love with this person. Yeah. They didn't just start off like yelling at you and hitting you. It was, it, wor it worked its way up to that. My ex was charming. He mm -hmm. had a great mm -hmm. smile. He was tall. He was charming. Complimented me all the time. All those things that he complimented me on would then become the things that um, he would throw rocks at. Oh, you're goofy. Like, you know, when we first met, he's like, oh, your personality, you're so funny. And, you know, you're good. then it just became, you, you're so goofy. You don't know how to be, you're not serious and don't nobody want you. You already got two kids. Like, mm -hmm. the, thing that, the thing that he liked, that was the thing that he began to tear me down with. Mm. Wow. Uh, and I hear that all the time and how it, it can build up and it all, it, can, it usually starts like subtle and then. It's very subtle. Somebody, oh, Michi no. says, help, hoping they will change. Yes. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, you're staying because you wanted to go back to what it used to be. And that's what they call the cycle of abuse. You go mm -hmm. through that honeymoon stage, the abusive stage. And back at the honeymoon stage, you want to stay at the honeymoon stage. Mm -hmm. So that's what you're working towards. You know, women, we don't want to give up. Like, we yeah. don't, don't want to give up. Mm -hmm. You Especially on our men. On stage. <laughs> yeah. It's, um, and I love that you mentioned how, you know, we can't victim shame. Because, you know, I think about even the recent situation with, um, with Megan the Stallion. And I'm like, there's just the stuff that comes out of people's mouths. I'm like, I don't know what else has to happen, like, for people to even have some type of sympathy and empathy for someone right. going through that. Like a clear situation where she was shot and all the victim blaming. But I always have wondered, based on like your personal experiences, as well as like with your experiences and work with other women, what do you say? What does someone like um, who hasn't been through that, like what if you have a friend or, you know, maybe even a coworker or just someone, you know, like, how, are, is there any advice in terms of like, how do you handle that situation? Mm -hmm. Like, what's what do you recommend in terms of like, how can people best help them without you know, because I know it can yes. also backfire. So it's like, it can backfire. And that is a great question. Um, the first thing I want people to know is that you can't rescue them. Mm. We want to rescue our friends and family members. You can't rescue them. They're going to leave when they're ready. Okay. The best thing that you can do is be supportive, non-judgmental. Like, what would you do to him to make him do that? Or, um, well, why are you saying, you just need to leave. You're stupid. You're being, you can't be judgmental. The thing that you can do is if they come to you, right, you want to acknowledge the fact that they even had the courage to share that because it's very difficult because people are embarrassed. It's very sh a shameful experience. I saw somebody put in the comments that they were away from their family in another city. Yeah. Um, and they were too embarrassed to tell their family members. And so it's embarrassing, especially if you're the person like me that everybody comes to and then you mm -hmm. go on through something like this. So being supportive, letting them know that you care about them, letting them know that you are concerned um, about their safety. So sharing things like that, um, even if they decide to go back, even if they don't leave at that moment, continue to be supportive. Because if you're not, when they're actually ready to leave, they're not going to reach out to you. Uh, that's good. But if you're, if you're not, so, so continue to be supportive, continue to check in on them. Give them resources. Hey, here's a number to the to the domestic violence hotline, or here's some, you know, a number to a shelter that you can go to. Oftentimes, friends and family members, if they know you're going through that, they may not necessarily even want you to stay with them because they feel like the abuser is going to come to their house and cause trouble. We yes. forget about that. Like, mm -mm, you can't stay with me, girl. I don't want him coming over here. Yes. You know what um, I mean? So you got to mm -hmm. think about that too. But being supportive, offering resources, 
um, non-judgmental, acknowledging that, you know what, I'm so proud of you for coming forward. I'm proud of your courage for opening up. I'm here for you when you're ready. Mm. Acknowledge their courage. I think that's so important because like you said, going behind the curtain, it's like, I don't think we understand sometimes how embarrassing that could be for a victim or a survivor. Like that's, that's hard. And so that really helps to put things into perspective because it is easy for people, those of us on the outside to be like, girl, like if that was me, you know, those famous words, if that was me, and it's like, yeah. but you can't say that, especially if you've never been through it. Even you if you have. So you're in that situation. I saw my mom go through it. I was like, oh, that will never be me. Wow. That would never be me. And then lo and behold, I end up in this relationship. And isn't there a statistic or some research behind that as well, that like if you experience it or witness it, you know, in your childhood or your past, that sometimes it repeats yes. itself as well? Mm -hmm. And it can go both ways. Um, you know, if you witness it, generational curses. In my book, Wounds to Wisdom, I actually have a chapter and it's called The Curse. And it talks about my mom and my grandmother and my great grandmother and all the research I did on my family history. And they were like, oh yeah, your great grandma was abused, your grandmother was abused, your mother was abused. So I'm like, at some point I had to break the cycle. Unfortunately, I had to go through what I went through to break the cycle with my children um, because they're very well versed. They're educated. When I first started my nonprofit, um, they were there with me. Like they can tell you the signs of an abuser, the red flags, because they were there when I was, when I started the nonprofit and when I'm teaching and training the community, they come to my event. So they know, it's like my daughter, like no nonsense. My son is very mild mannered. And so I feel like, thank you God, that, um, that curse has been broken with this generation. And I love that because like so often I feel like, I don't know if this was true for you, but growing up, there were so many secrets and so many things that like our parents and grandparents never told us about. But some of that, I know some of it was to protect us, but some of it we needed to know so that we could know what it looked like or how to get out of it or how to like overcome it. But there were so many secrets. It was like, they just wanted, some of them just wanted to protect us so much. It's like they mm -hmm. never, it was like, oh yeah, I went through that too. You're like, well, why didn't anybody tell me? Right. It's like, girl, I went through that too. It's okay. Or no, it's not okay. Not. Right? So we're different. Like, you know, it's different. Now we like, no, that's not okay. Um, keeping those family secrets, what happens in this house stays in this house. You can't tell anybody. And um, my, when I wrote my book, my family was like, oh, you telling it? Like, yes, I'm because if I don't, if I don't, then I can't save anybody. But the more I share and if I tell it, y'all just gonna have to be okay with it. Y'all gonna have to be mad at me for the moment. But I'm telling it because I need to save these other women out here. Exactly. They were mad at me for, for the moment and then they got over it. But wait, who was mad? Your family was mad? Oh, yes. Because I had to go back to the root of the problem. Like, how did I even get here? I went all the way back to when I was born, my family, my mom and dad's relationship, what I saw her go through. And um, I had I had to go back to the root of it to figure it out. Mm -hmm. And my dad was mad, my mother was mad, but here's, at the end of the day, it kind of brought us closer together. So once she read the book, she was like, I want to share my story now. Mm -hmm. So now I've helped her to share her story. Um, I don't know if you know, I do the, the Survivor Series. It's a book where we compile yes. the you story. Know, I have so my mom is in that book. So she was able to go to her, through her healing process through sharing her story. So she was mad for a month, for a minute, and then she was like, you know what, I need to get this out. So it helped. Mm -hmm. And your book, because um, I have the first series, because I know you in partnership with um, Jenny, oh, all the way oh, Jenny over Still in London. In London. Yes. yes. I have the shirt, Love Doesn't Hurt. That's where yes. I, yes, I love from. Jenny. Hey, if yes. hey, Jenny, if you're there, yeah. I love her. Right. She's pro she says she's going to tune in. I'm like, Jenny, it's probably going to be really late by the time. So she might see it in the morning. Okay. But um, yeah, like, I just think that's one of my, you have a whole series though, right? Like, because you have like a series, you're on yeah, series three series. now. So we released, last year we released, actually this year during the pandemic, we released volume three. Awesome. And I love that because it's, that's why this was conversation was so important. And even just this outlet is so important because once one person speaks up, it gives other people the courage to speak up as well. And I know it's hard 
I know, and it's not for everybody. And everybody has to do it, and you know, everybody uh, heals and grows it's at different, different stages, stage. right? But yeah. I know how open you are, so I'm just thankful that you're so courageous. Because I know I can only imagine how many women you've impacted, not just tonight, but throughout mm -hmm. your entire journey, and how inspirational that's been. And so I applaud you, and I just thank you again for just being here tonight, because it's not easy to talk about and have to relive that. But I know that through your courage, someone else is going to hopefully start their healing journey or start their process of like dealing with that. Yeah. And, you know, I thank you for saying that because people often forget how difficult it is to share and how those emotions come back up. Oh. And I remember when Kenny and I got married or when he was dating, he was like, oh, my gosh, like, I love the work that you I love your advocacy work. But we didn't realize is that. October, right? I'm always sharing my story. I'm speaking here. I'm speaking. He was like, so now he's like, I don't like October. Right. Because you seem <laughs> sad. And because I, you know, and I'm like, well, so he's used to it now. So he's supportive. Yeah. He's like, you good? You okay? You need some wine. Right. Yeah. So he knows I get my wine. He like, get your wine shipment in. Right. You know, let me pour you some wine. <laughs> yes. And shout out to your um, husband, Kenny. We see you, Kenny, in the chat. Like, that's, I love that he's here to support you. And speaking to that, like, talking about you and Kenny, because I'm so, like, it's like, that was that. And now it's like, look at God. Like, we praise God for where you are now and that you're living your empowered life, as you like to say, which I love. Like, how difficult or was it difficult for you when, because I know you had, like, those three terrible, it was like the, like you said, different face, same name. Mm -hmm. But with Kenny, how was that journey with him and learning to trust and love all over again? Like, how was that journey for you with Kenny? So, um, well, the journey has been great. I'm very thankful um, that he's totally opposite from anything that I've ever, any not thing, he's not a thing, he's a man. Yeah. We knew so, what you <laughs> totally opposite from anyone that I had ever dated. Very kind, very gentle, very warm, very mild tempered. And Kenny probably is he if he's listening. He yeah, probably he said to sad all month. He throwing shade. Yeah, so but he can attest to this when we were first courting or dating. Um, like every like other month, I would try to break up with him because I equivalated equivalated love with being upset or mad if I did mm -hmm. something to piss you off. Like you would get upset with me that that meant that you loved me. So I was still going through my process. So there were certain things that would come up and I would be like, I would break, I would like, you don't, I, it was like, I thought he didn't care about me because he was so mild mannered and he never got yeah. upset. Yeah. So I almost sabotaged that. Mm. I almost sabotaged that. And Kenny told me, I was in the middle of writing my first book, Wounds to Wisdom, when we were dating. And he said, you know what, when you get done with that book, that's when the healing is really gonna take place and you'll be ready. And literally, as soon as I finished that book, I remember he was at my book signing. And like three months later, that's when he proposed because I was ready. I oh, got it all out yeah. on paper, got the book out, and then I was ready. Wow. And that is yeah. so true. Writing is so therapeutic. It is like, therapeutic. It's very therapeutic. You reveal stuff about yourself and you're like, oh, look. And you're like, I felt that. Like, and like you said, you finish and you like, it's almost like a weight lift off your shoulders because it's yes. like a purge of your spirit and yes. everything that you've gone through. It's like purging all of that. It is. Um, and it's a process. So, you know, you asked me about the process, the journey with Kenny. So I went from wounds to wisdom to living the empowered life and living the empowered life. And we talked about values, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Understanding your values and making sure that they align with the person that God has for you. I think mm -hmm. Kenny and I, um, we can both say that we share very common values, but we also um, merge our values. So he has a value system that he grew up with. I have my value system and kind of bringing those together, right? So that also helps um, both of us understanding what our life purpose is. That also helps. Um, I'm sharing some of the principles actually from Living the Empowered Life. Yeah. Right? So one of them is your values. Another one is your purpose. The other one is overcoming fear. So all those fears, um, those limiting beliefs that keep us from being successful, right? So successful in life, in your relationships and business. And so overcoming those limiting beliefs and facing that fear, because I was scared. Like, I don't want to go through this again. Like, yeah. you know, that's why I almost sabotaged it. Because I'm like, I'm afraid. I don't want to go through this. But being able to push forward and face your fears 
and just trust God, trust that process, man. Just trust the process. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, because we can get so used to being in toxic, terrible relationships that we think that that's the norm. And God is like, that ain't what I was talking about when I was talking about love. Like, mm -hmm. that's not what love looks like. And then, like you say, you get so scared. You're like, that's not what I'm used to, God. This can't be it. And he's like, actually, this is what I'm trying to give to you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but like you said, you got to over, you got to like overcome that fear and like talk and tell yourself, I deserve this. Like you do. Absolutely. Knowing that value, <clears throat> like you're talking about. I love that. And it's like, Kenny and I had a non-traditional courting experience. When I met him, he had just wrote his first book, Can You Do It Standing Up? Right. Which is really talking about not doing it standing up. But yes. can you do a relationship standing up God's way and not laying down? Mm -hmm. So it was different. Our relationship, our courting was different. So we were very strategic mm -hmm. about or intentional about the way that we dated. Like, let's go to the coffee shop and get to know mm -hmm. each other. You know, it ain't no staying over late and, right. you know, stuff like that. Um, yeah. I'm going to tell it real funny, though, real <laughs> quickly <laughs> i remember like hanging out we'll watch a movie having a movie night and i was like oh it's tired i'm tired but you got some shorts i can put on he was like no nah, it's, it's about you probably should get going i was like okay <laughs> i'm sorry kenny i had to be transparent <laughs> and share that <laughs> but you know just being intentional mm -hmm. being intentional um so we were another we were celibate until <laughs> he said i made her go home he, he sure did <laughs> He's so like, you to go. <laughs> um, it was different getting to know someone without that part of the intimacy, because you could be intimate, intimate without um, having sex. And so being intimate, getting to know that person. Girl, by the time we went to our premarital counseling, we had already covered everything. Mm -hmm. Like, literally, we had already covered everything that they talked about, um, because we were intentional about the way we dated going to the co coffee shop, asking each other questions. Mm -hmm. Like, what's your favorite color? Which, you know, what's your favorite city to travel to? Like, we knew all of that about each other. And it's predominantly is because of Kenny. Like, mm -hmm. he, he really knew how to really work that. And mm -hmm. he facilitated most of that. Yes, I love it. And I know that you two are also intentional even about your marriage. Mm -hmm. So like, um, I love, you had put a quote on your page um, one day it said, the more you invest in your marriage, the more valuable it becomes, which I love. And what are some of those ways that you all continue to invest in your marriage as well and, you know, add that value to it? Yeah. So can I just put, he had a questionnaire. He did have a questionnaire and I thought that was weird as heck. Weird as heck. I was like, dude sent me a questionnaire, y'all. <laughs> I told my friend. Yeah, he sent me a questionnaire. Listen, he was intentional. He Come on, Kenny. I see you, Kenny. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, okay, so your question is, the more you invest in your marriage. So some of the things that we do to invest, I think we both love quality time. Mm -hmm. Like, you have to spend quality time with your spouse. That means putting away your phone. Yes. Like, because we're both full-time entrepreneurs, I could get stuck in my office all day, my home office. He's in his home office just a couple of feet away from me. The bathroom separates us, but I might not see him all day. Yep. So being intentional for us, having a lunch break. Let's take a lunch break and get out of the house and go somewhere. Oh, let's take a lunch break and watch our favorite Netflix series. Let's watch a couple of episodes. Um, having a specific date night mm -hmm. that we're actually dating each other and we're getting out of the house and we're, we're doing things. The other thing and Kenny mentioned is understanding your spouse's love language. Mm -hmm. If you don't understand their love language, then you're going to be so confused about, like, why they are the way that they are. Like, mm -hmm. my love language is touch, quality time. Like, if we don't get quality time, I have an attitude. Yeah. Right? So, um, <laughs> and I'm physical touch. I'm like, rub my head, rub my back. And he like, my fingers hurt. <laughs> <You're> like, um, <laughs> but for him, you know, he's, um, his biggest love language is acts of service, which mm -hmm. I had to really learn and study. Like, what is it that he needs for acts of service? And yeah. figured it out. I think we, we are at a place now where we both get it and we understand mm -hmm. each other. I love that. And someone earlier, Tasha, hey, Tasha, she said, you're helping me. I'm single and do hope to one day be married. So what you just shared has been great. And oh, I just you're so welcome. That because I just, I just know, I know when a good word and a good gym can go through, but yeah, when it touches yeah. people, that's, 
that's why we do this yeah like, absolutely i love it yes years. and by the way i love this i love what you're doing single people married women we all need something like this like i literally i pray for you and i i can see this being something bigger maybe somebody a network a youtube channel like this is so important that we have these conversations so i'm gonna be playing praying with you and for you um mm -hmm. that you be on somebody's network with this because <laughs> it's needed like we have all these gossip shows oh talking my God. about celebrity gossip but let's talk about marriage let's talk about these relationships right and especially the black marriage in yes. our relationships with with one another as women like this is, mm -hmm. we gotta pour into one another yes thank you so much for saying that because i just and i've never felt so like aligned you know obviously and i'm sure you've experienced this as well it's like you write books you do speaking and stuff and then you're kind of just sitting there like well what's next and so i had to get real still with god and because people were telling me what they thought i should do you should da, 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 da. And, I, and none of it was like i was like i'm not feeling none of that and then quarantine happened and obviously it had to be extra still. So I appreciate you saying that because like I said earlier, I didn't have, I didn't have anybody when I first got married. And even if there were people to talk to, you didn't feel comfortable. It's like, well, we're going through this and I feel like my marriage is probably about to fall apart, but I guess I'm just going to push through. It's like, and then you talk to other people and realize, oh, they go through the same thing. Like they do. Yeah. Ooh, quarantine messed some people up. Oh, thank God we made it. Well, Listen. We still a little bit quarantined, but we got through those months. Honey. I'm like, dang, I got we looking at each other all day. Quality oh. time overload. Like, we probably don't need no more quality time throughout to 2022. Listen. Like, literally. <laughs> Listen, Linda. Um, somebody said, hey, I walk my own path. She said, it's a must to work on your partner's love language. It shows your partner that you care about their needs. 100%. Because it's not enough just to know what they are. I like that you said you actually studied it. Because mm -hmm. it's one thing like, oh, yeah, that's your love language. But it's like, but are you putting that into action? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I need you to put that into action. Um, speaking of quarantine, um, and before we do our rapid fire fun round, what have you two enjoyed most about quarantine and the time that you have been able to spend together? I think that we had an opportunity to rediscover each other. Mm -hmm. um rediscovering what we both enjoy i literally enjoy, we both discovered that we love action movies um oh. we like um action action pack like gang drug lord movies like so we yeah. both live for that and i'm like how did i not know this before right so we literally spent quarantine like watching narcos and yes um, uh, what's that other show that we watched kenny are you on Con right. Quarantine, you know, something. Have um, y'all seen Sicario one and two? I forgot, but we literally spent quarantine doing that. Like literally, okay. we just. Go and then the other thing, um, pushing each other towards our goals because we were stuck in the house. Like, mm -hmm. okay, what can we? What are we gonna do to be productive? Yeah. And I have been wanting to launch my academy for a very long time, and he was like, "Now was the time. Like, it's time to go ahead and launch those." additions to our businesses that we wanted um i launched the living man power life academy he rebranded his coaching and consulting business and um just really supporting one another mm -hmm. i love yeah. that kenny said narcos she said that one kenny but it was quantico, another one. that's the other one i was trying to think of oh quantico, quantico okay like we would be watching tv from like eight in the morning until yes. like after midnight i'd be like yes. okay one more episode he's like oh we need to go to bed like I we love what day it is. i'd be like well what day is it yeah you know, like march <laughs> april we were forgetting what day it was yeah and then some days though i would be like okay i'm about to go sit on the back patio because i've been looking at you like all week so oh, <laughs> yes we love narcos like eric's obsessed he's it's like as soon as it ended he was like let's watch again i'm like we just watched it like we need mm -hmm. like I always want to like what's the next thing, but he's like let's rewatch it again. He wants to watch The Wire all over again. I'm like we've watched it twice now. Oh like, yeah, I love The Wire. <laughs> yes, I love that and discovering each other again. I love that like because like you said, some people didn't make it through this quarantine. They've already given up. Their, mm -hmm. the, the divorce papers are on the way. So to your point, praise the Lord that we have made it through this yes. quarantine because we it made could it. Work, right, <laughs> we survived. So switching gears, um, thank you so much, Miko, because your story is just so empowering and so powerful. And uh, even just the small gems that you shared and like, because I know 
like just going into all the details that can be pretty traumatic and a lot to to unpack but even what you shared tonight has just been so powerful so i want to switch gears and have a little fun in what we like to call Yay, our rapid fire round stuff. yes so um these are just a few questions just to ask and kenny if you're still on feel free to respond as well um and ladies y'all know um y'all can feel free to respond as well because they get slid in the chat but um uh -oh. are you ready i'm ready wait let me okay. take a sip Yes, take a sip. And ladies, get y'all glasses ready because y'all know we're going to toast <laughs> after this. Um, okay, first one. Toilet paper over or under? <laughs> <clears throat> I used to didn't care. I would just put it on there. But over. All right. <laughs> this is one of our fan favorites. But I will say someone sent me one of our viewers. She's here like almost every week. Radiance. Shout out to you, Radiance. I don't know if she's on tonight. But um, she might catch the replay. But she sent me something, and they said the original patent or whatever for toilet paper actually is over, not under. So mm, to all y'all. Oh, Kenny taught me that. He's like, you just slap it on there any kind, of, any kind of way. I'm like, I don't think it matters. It's tissue. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, oh, this one. Who takes longer to get ready, you or him? It depends what day. Um. Kenny can take a long time. You know, he a Kappa. They be trying to be cute. You know, we married to Kappa. I was on, I'm like, go on, say Kenny. I already know it's Kenny. It's Kenny. I, I get dressed quicker than him. Because my husband, <laughs> I'm like, what are you, just to go to the grocery store. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> oh, Lord. Yes, uh, I, I think I get dressed quicker. Mm-hmm. He said, what? Yes, Kenny, what? <laughs> We're talking about you and Eric, you cap them in. We know how y'all do. Um, who's the better driver? Him. Okay, all right, all right. Home cooked meal or takeout? We do, it's even. Um, <laughs> takeout. <laughs> <laughs> Who cooks more, you or him? Me. Okay. Kenny talking about he can get ready in five minutes. Lies, I don't believe it. <laughs> I don't believe it. Um, How many who's events have you been late for, Kenny? Because you right. were taking too long. Thank you. Come on. Speak the truth. Um, who's the better listener, you or him? Him. Okay. Uh, Me. Okay. You. Oh, I changed my mind. I'm the better listener. Okay. Okay. Yes. This is your truth. Because like watching sports and looking at the scores. I'm the better listener. <laughs> Angela said, oh, Kappa man, gotta love him. Hashtag, she's married to Kappa too. Yes. See, yes. we already know. Um, do you prefer a vacation at the beach or a cold cabin getaway? Beach for me. Mm -hmm. me I too. think we both like the beach. Yes. Who's usually the first to initiate sex? Him. Mm -hmm. um, personal. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It depends on how much wine I had. <laughs> That's honest. <laughs> oh, um, would you rather, this is a little personal, but uh -oh. kind of would you rather option A, argue all the time, but have great makeup sex, or B, never argue and have mediocre sex? I'd rather argue and have great makeup sex. Okay, all right. <laughs> like, what you say to me? Get upstairs. Right. All you know, right. Like, yes. <laughs> Yes, honey. Um, who's usually the first to apologize? Dang. Uh-oh. What do we have to apologize about, though? I'm like, we don't argue a lot. Um, mm -hmm. Me. Okay. All right. All right. Because I'm probably the one that did something crazy or said <laughs> something. So <laughs> Kenny's more calm. I'm the free spirit. You know, I don't think everything through so me yeah I, i'm with you sis <laughs> um okay last one favorite black love movie of all time your personal favorite my favorite black love movie would have Ooh, to be kenny said you are you don't apologize first kenny's hate kenny <laughs> we don't even argue that much <laughs> now y'all about to have a argument tonight about the argument. love jones is the one yeah love jones yeah, love and basketball, love Jones. Yes. Mm, can't go wrong. I told them last week, my guest last week, she said love and basketball. And she was kind of surprised. 
She was like, you think it's, I'm like, everyone love. it's not my top one. I like it. But if I took a poll, I know. And even in the comments, I speak, everybody was like, love it as well. Like, I know that it's a yeah. favorite. It's not my personal favorite. What's like, your favorite like, one? Top five, but not like top three. The best man. The best man was good. That would be, that would be number three probably for me. So mine would be love Jones, love and basketball. The best man. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Tasha said boomerang. Yeah, that was a good really? one. Okay. That, that was, was fun. <laughs> I love it. Okay, so um, Tamiko, I cannot thank you enough for tonight. Someone earlier mentioned, um, let's see if I could find the comment. Are we done already? Um, I know. You know, she, they said, it was me. She said, your truth on tonight has helped many. Continue walking in your purpose. God has so much more. I appreciate you with a whole bunch of hearts. Oh, thank you Aww. so much. Yes. Somebody said I need to go back and watch these movies again. That's Absolutely. We're going to have, yeah. we're going to watch all the Black Love movies tonight, Kenny. I hope ain't no sports coming on. Right. What's today? Wednesday? No. Blackish comes on tonight. That's for like a nine. Okay. Mm -hmm. So grab your glasses, ladies. Y'all know what time it is in the chat. Grab your glasses. Shout out to Erica, one of my best friends. Oh, my cute glasses, so cute. This is Wes Wendell. She got, gave it to me for my birthday. She sent it. She had it made. But anyway, um, tell us, Miko, what your first tell everyone how they can follow you and like any classes or anything that you have coming up because you have a lot going on, especially with uh, living the empowered life. Mm -hmm. So share with them anything you want to share as well as what you're toasting to tonight. All right, so ladies, um, you can follow me on all social media networks at Tamika Lori Q. Um, that's Instagram, Twitter. My Facebook is all the same. Website is TamikaLaurie.com. Um, some of the things that I have coming up, um, the Living the Empower Life Academy, our, our um, signature program is our Life Coach Certification Program, where we really teach women how to use their natural gifts, their expertise and experience to make money and make a difference. Because I really believe that we're called uh, to make a difference in people's lives, but you can also, you know, make money off of you, the expertise that you already have. Mm -hmm. we, for those of you who are interested in being trained domestic violence advocates, we do have a domestic violence advocacy certification program that's coming up. So you can find all of that information on um, TamikaLaurie.com. And what was the other thing I'm supposed to do? Oh, what you're toasting to tonight. And let me go ahead and apologize in advance for jacking up your your maiden middle name now but yes i said larry it's really it's okay. <laughs> but yes what are you toasting to tonight tonight i am toasting to well we're talking about you know wives so we'll i'm gonna toast to love happiness and peace for the rest of this year because mm -hmm. i think we can all use a little bit of happiness and peace COVID has taught, taught us anything um and that life is short and so turned out yeah. for what Clean, clean. Yes. Eye contact. Eye contact. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, I was thirsty. And I <laughs> am toasting to you and your courageous fighter survivor spirit. Um, we need to hear more stories like yours. You are an inspiration. And so I toast to you and all of the survivors, and even those who unfortunately fell victim to domestic violence, I toast to all of you courageous ladies. I have never personally been through that, and so I can only imagine, but I think you all are some of the strongest, most courageous women ever, and so I toast to you and all of those women that you represent, and may those of us who maybe haven't even been through that, may we help be a voice and help support and empower and encourage you all as well, as much as you all encourage and inspire us. Thank you so much. Cheers. Cheers. Cling, cling, cling. Uh, All right, so we have to plan a double date night. Yes, a double save. Listen now, I, it's, it's, it's fairly easy with me to plan. Convincing the other Kappa is going to be a bit difficult. It's going to have to be very strategic and very safe. Hardly yeah, no yeah. one we'll else. on a virtual date night. That'll be fun. Okay, yeah. Oh, we'll, we'll get together and talk about it offline. Yeah. We'll de I'm definitely down for that. Okay. Um, so thank you so much, ladies. All of you all who tune in, if you're watching this and you're like, oh my gosh, 
I know what this net is. If you're like, oh my gosh, this has been incredible. I wish we could do this again. Guess what? We're going to be here again next week. Um, next Wednesday, same bat time, same bat channel, um, Wise Wind Down. And if you missed it or you came in late, you're like, oh my gosh, you missed a phenomenal story from Tamiko and just her experience and how she's overcome so much and how God has blessed her now with her empowered life. So if you missed it, you can tune in right after this. The replay will be available on my IGTV as well as all of the previous episodes. And so again, thank you to everyone. Share, tell a friend. And Tamiko, thank you so much again for your yes and for your just courage and for your story it means the world to me and so you. shout thank out you everyone for this yes i love you all and i hope y'all have a wonderful week bye